the data all across America is showing that hate crimes have surged in the last six weeks. Since October 7th, there has been a 400 percent increase in threats against Jews, Muslims, and Arabs. And make no mistake, we've not stood idly by for strengthening physical security of locations. We're also making the digital world safer by identifying credible online threats. These teams are working to identify violent threats. They have a simple goal, to find out what's driving hateful behavior and intervene early before harm is done. That was New York Governor Kathy Hochul announcing beefed up security. It's over growing threats of a terror attack here in New York City as tourists pour in for the Thanksgiving holiday and the parade. Anti-Semitism on college campuses is on the rise. A bipartisan group of dozens of state lawmakers calling on Hochul to ban the group Students for Justice in Palestine from campuses after scenes like this. Many see that chant from the river to the sea as a code for annihilating Israel. Those lawmakers writing this, quote, student groups which explicitly endorse registered foreign terrorist organizations must be shut down at the university level. That hate is not limited to rallies, messages praising Adolf Hitler and calling to exterminate the Jewish people have been scrawled in New York City subways. And look at this photo. This is from New Jersey. A grenade reportedly strapped to a pole outside a synagogue in the town of Lakewood, home to a large Orthodox Jewish community. Jason Chaffetz, Fox News contributor and former Utah congressman. It's hard to believe this is happening right now, Jason. Yeah, right now in America, uh, it's unbelievable but that, that they have so many people that want to exterminate Jews uh, because they are Jews. Uh, it, it, it is stunning, but I would argue that this has not been just since October 7th. Now, obviously, since then, uh, the, the, the temperatures have risen and the, the protests have been just uh, out of control. Uh, but Jews have been fighting this for a long time, and uh, people like Kathy Hochul and others have been nowhere on this. Don't tell me that you're strengthening what's going on uh, in New York because the numbers of law enforcement have been going down. There have been chants and, and people that have been supportive of defunding the police along the way. Um, it's hard for me to, to take her uh, a pledge that law enforcement is stronger than it's been before or that it's being beefed up when they've been actually letting people go. Um, this is this is true. And these numbers are just even hard to fathom the spikes that we're seeing um, in, from the crime task force, uh, anti-Jewish incidents and beyond, number of bias incidents in general. Uh, Jason, our own Chad program writing a piece titled The Divide, how a protest, o protest over Israel exposed a serious rift in the Democratic Party. An excerpt reading, quote, left-wing activists are fracturing the party over calls for a ceasefire and Israel's assert assertion to defend itself. That's to say nothing of controversial comments by squad members. That's why the lockdown of the House office buildings and the tense protests outside the DNC last week was so important. It's liberals attacking liberals. Democrats will struggle to highlight internal Republican dissent when members of their own party are clashing over something as flammable as the Middle East. A new national poll highlights that rift among Democrat voters. 51 percent say Israel went too far in its war against Hamas. Only 27 percent say its actions are justified. All really good points that Chad is highlighting in this piece here, Jason, but very revealing over some of the problems that the Democrat Party is dealing with in this moment. Yeah, this, uh, there is a faction of the Democratic Party that is just unrecognizable. They, they really do believe that the ex extermination of the Jewish state is what they want to have happen. And it's played out in Congress. Um, what happened at the DNC? You, look, it's as American as it gets to be able to protest and petition your government. But you can't do so violently. And when they're in New York City and they're tearing down flags and they're, they're uh, you know, at Grand Central Station pounding on the glass trying to get after the police who are hiding on the other side of the glass. And I got to tell you, the other thing that has got to be uh, factored in here 
is the unparalleled illegal immigration. Millions of people under Biden and Harris have been allowed to come into this country illegally, and there's a consequence for that. We don't know who these people are, other people that are captured on the terrorist watch list. Mm. And now they're saying, oh, well, hey, there's an increased risk of, of, of violence. Oh, yeah? Is that a surprise, given your open border policy? Yeah, well, it's something a lot of people are talking about around the city right now. And certainly Kathy Hochul is seeing the warning signs and trying to ramp up security in a moment of Holiday should be bliss. Jason, meanwhile, House Oversight Chair James Comer blasting President Biden's promise to be the most transparent commander in chief. Comer posting on X, uh, used to be known as Twitter. The White House is withholding over 82,000 pages of Joe Biden's pseudonym emails, refuses to provide proof that Joe loaned his brother money, and now seeks to block the Bidens and former staff from testifying before Congress. Biden's pledge to be transparent was just hot air. House Judiciary Chair Jim Jordan's telling Fox Republicans are closing in on a make or break moment whether to file formal impeachment articles against the president. He says that decision could come in January. Former House Speaker Kevin McCarthy dropping this bombshell over the weekend. No one in America would have known that President Biden has lied, that they did receive money from China, that, that, yeah, yeah, that he did get involved in the business dealings. We have systematically followed every place the facts have taken us each and every day. And now it's moved even closer because now we've got the subpoenas going in to the, get the bank statements. We found all of this, the shell yeah. companies no one knew about prior. This is important. So he says the GOP has moved closer to impeachment. Should the GOP be doing this? Um, they need to pursue the facts because is the is the president compromised? We know, and it's been well documented that there are millions of dollars that have flowed into the Biden bank accounts. Um, and and for all those Democrats who continue to chant that there's no evidence, uh, there are suspicious activity reports, there are financial transactions, there are shell companies, emails, uh, voicemails, text messages. Um, a treasure trove of material, some testimony from IRS officials saying they weren't allowed to properly investigate the president of the United States. And when James Comer, who is doing a fabulous job as the as the oversight chairman trying to get at these documents, there are 82,000 or so documents out there that Joe Biden, uh, under a pseudonym that he was using as a government official. Guess what? You got to cough those up. You, you, you just do. You can't just hold them all back and and if you're going to claim that you're the most transparent, then you got to actually do it. But that's not Joe Biden. That's not what they're doing. OK, we'll see where they get with it. Uh, Jason Chaffetz, good to see you and happy holiday to you and yours. Happy Thanksgiving. Thank right. you. To you as well. Hey, everyone. I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co-hosts Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany on Outnumbered every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern or set your DVR. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page for daily highlights.